Good morning, everyone. Welcome to service on this beautiful summer day. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Mary Ann, a member of Trinity United Church. I'm pleased to guide you in today's explorations, whether you're worshiping here or virtually. I hope you enjoy the music, feel the spirit, and grow in your faith journey. Today is Name Tag Sunday, so for those of you who don't have one, there are sticky name tags. It's a great way to learn people's names if you haven't already, and say hello to some new people. This afternoon, we have the Sing Together Community Concert, and I saw lots of goodies coming in for the bake sale afterwards, so please take time to do that if that uh, fits into your schedule. I saw there were a couple of requests for help. Um, they're looking for movers on Saturday, July 1st. And at the side table, there is also a clipboard if you're interested in signing up for floral arrangements. The information is in the announcement sheet. If you didn't get one, uh, feel free to pick one up. We also have an announcement from Marge. some pictures taken um, two of them on the night that our family arrived and the other one um, the day that we went to visit them so the one on the left is the two families the, the first family that we sponsored and now the current family um, I'm not going to go through who they all are Bassam the original one from way back 2011 was it Norm about there yeah um, he's the dad in the family, and Mar was down towards this end. Hamoudi, if you remember Hamoudi, Tina remembers Hamoudi. <laughs> he's the 18-year-old the, uh, that's here at the front in the orange shirt. Um, Mina's behind him, and she was his little sister when they arrived. And the rest of the family are the new people that have come, and I'll show you their picture better. But I thought you might like to see. This is taken about midnight at Pearson Airport. <laughs> and they are all so happy to be together. This is Wissam. This is the dad in the, in the household, and this is the, the man that we, I've been most in touch with when making the applications and that sort of thing. He looks very tired, but he is happy. Okay, the next one. There they are. Far left, of course, is dad Wissam. Nettie beside him. Next to Nettie is Roseanne. Then in the middle of the two girls is Anam, and then Shahad. And they are all delightful, and I can't wait for you to meet them all. So to follow up what uh, Marianne mentioned, Norm is um, arranging for a moving crew to take all the things that are here at the church to furnish their apartment, and that's going to be done on Canada Day. So uh, meet at the church here at 8 o'clock to load up the trucks and trailers and that sort of thing. I'm looking, and uh, Norm's going to help me too, for anyone that would be interested in helping reorganize some of the donations that we've got. I'd like to put them in boxes for kitchen, bathroom, that sort of thing, so when the moving crew take them, they can put them in the, the, the correct room. So you can talk to me if you are able to help with that. Thank you. Thank you. For thousands of years, indigenous people have walked on this land. Their relationship with land is at the center of their lives and spirituality. As we come into worship, we recognize that Trinity United Church is located on the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and Attawandrak peoples who have cared for this land since time immemorial. The community of Ingersoll is represented by both the Between the Lakes Treaty of 1792 and the London Township Treaty of 1796. As we gather, we are mindful of the broken covenants and the need to strive to make right with all our relations. As treaty people, we commit to listen, learn, and work toward justice and reconciliation. As we light this candle, 
we remember Jesus and his prayer that believers in him may all be one, as he was one with Abba God, so that we may be a witness to the world for his sake. Please join me as we speak the affirmation of our faith in the words of the United Church Creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Today's prayer comes from Cindy Randall. Loving God, creator of us all, we come seeking your refreshing presence in the midst of this season of summer. Like cool water or a gentle breeze, you renew us and enliven us to be your faithful community. Draw our hearts together as we come here today to worship you. Teach us your will to do, your word to speak, your song to sing, and your love to share. We pray in the strong name of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Thank you. 
There are a few children today, so if you want to join me up at the front, you can. Nobody? There we go. Oh, what happened, Addison? Not that you want to tell the whole church, sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. I knew it had to be relatively new. It's still clean. Right. <laughs> I know, well, there's three. Lydia's here too, right? Yeah. All right, so here I have an unlit candle. If you had this in a dark room, would it be pretty dark in the room? Yeah, yeah. What sorts of things do you like to do in the dark or the nighttime? Is there anything that you like to do that are really good at night? What do you think, Edgar? Ooh, that sounds like fun, yeah. So can you see lots of things when it's dark? Yeah. Pretty good. Excellent. Good use of your imagination. Anything else you like to do? Anybody have anything? Does anybody like to look at the stars? Maybe find some constellations? Right, are you good at that? Can you find the Big Dipper? Yeah. And how about in the summertime? After it gets dark and you're sitting out around your campfire is there anything you like to do Maybe. fireflies they're one of my favorites you've never been camping no have you ever had s'mores yeah that's one of my favorite things to do in the dark yeah excellent all right how about if I light this candle let's see if we can do this here It looks like a metal candle, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not. It's just silver. So now we've got a little bit more light. What sorts of things do you like to do in the daylight or the daytime? Edgar? You play with your dog. Excellent. Or your kitten. Wow, sounds like you have a busy household. Addison, do you have something you like to do in the daylight? No? Dancing? Yeah. Lydia, ride your bike. Those are all great things to do in the daylight. So I know you've been learning in Sunday school about early Bible stories like the story of creation or Noah and the animals. Today in church, we're going to learn about the history of the United Church of Canada and the symbols in the crest, which are all part of who we are as children of God and when we remember that God created the darkness and he created the light, right? And he created everything in it. We are part of that creation in this world. Let's pray together. Creator God, thank you for darkness and light. Creator God, thank you for darkness and light. Thank you for our pets and dancing. Thank you for fireflies and s'mores. Thank you for opportunities to play outside and ride our bikes. Help us to continue to learn, especially about how to be good examples of your love. Amen. All right, so there's no Sunday school today, but there are packages of activities in the bin underneath the table if you want one, and otherwise you can try and learn a little bit more about the history of the United Church. Yes, Edgar? Yes. Well, I, that's a really good question. Did he create viruses and bad stuff? Well, I'm not sure. I might have to read my Bible a little bit more and think about that. But I know that sometimes humans influence what God created, right? So sometimes God doesn't intend for it to be bad, but humans make it bad, right? So there's a little bit of that. And there's a little bit of, I have to read my Bible to see what else I can figure out. That's a great question. Thank you. 
I do. Thank you for challenging me today, Edgar. Well, well, I'm so glad you came today. Yeah? Okay. Well, I hope you come again. All right. It's okay there. It'll be okay. It's long. It's all right. It's all good. I will blow it out later, though, if it looks like it's going to be a problem. How's that? All right. So we're going to join together in song. morning's gospel readings uh, come from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 11 to 13 and it's titled Final Greetings. Finally, brothers and sisters, goodbye. Put things in order. Respond to my encouragement. Be in harmony with each other and live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Say hello to each other with a holy kiss all of God's people say help to hello to you the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit 
be with you all. And our second reading is from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20, and it's titled The Great Commission. Then the eleven, the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Bless us the holy reading. Thank you. Thank you. This, this week is Union Sunday, celebrated on the Sunday before June 10th, which is the anniversary of the inauguration of the United Church of Canada. It is also Trinity Sunday, a day to celebrate doctrine, the structure that we create to help us better understand what we believe. So what do we believe? What does it mean to be a part of the bigger United Church community? I'm not a history buff, but my new boss likes to give the history of things to help me con make connections to the people I'm meeting. In our readings today, God encourages us to be in harmony with each other and live in peace. So today, we will be looking more closely at the United Church crest, a symbol of our union with the wider United Church of Canada. All of the information that I'm sharing today came from a service put together in 2014 and shared by Glenda Thornton and Gathering Magazine, with a few additions from other United Church resources. The United Church has always been a uniting church that seeks to partner with other people of faith and goodwill. Over the years, our theologies and spiritual understandings have deepened as we have grown in mutual partnership nationally and globally. In recent years, we've also declared our commitment to become an intercultural church. In intercultural spaces, everyone is impacted by each other's presence. There's mutuality, reciprocity, and respect. Second Corinthians encouraged us to say hello to all of God's people and work together to bring people to Jesus' word. With the Bible as a shared foundation of our faith, and Jesus as the cornerstone, the United Church releases statements of faith, creeds such as the one we said together at the beginning of the service, and songs. We display the crest as a spiritual and historic reminder of the diversity of members of the United Church across Canada. The inaugural service of the United Church of Canada took place on June 10, 1925, at Mutual Street Arena the first home of the Maple Leafs. At this meeting, it was declared that the Church of Christ was for the worship of God in praise and prayer, the preaching of the everlasting gospel, the administration of the holy sacraments, which for us are baptism and communion, and the edifying of the body of Christ, the evangelizing of the world, word and promotion of righteousness and goodwill. The crest was not adopted until 1944 by the 11th General Council. Designed by Reverend Dr. Victor T. Mooney, the crest is the official signature of the United Church of Canada to be placed on all legal documents. Mooney was the treasurer of the United Church at the time when the executive ordered that a seal be designed. The committee were not impressed by any of the professionally designed seals so almost 20 years later, in 1943, moderator Dr. Slater asked Mooney, who was a doodler, to see what he could come up with. They wanted to ensure that the crest would contain symbols to represent the various denominations that came into union, Presbyterian, Methodist, and congregational branches of the Church of Christ in Canada. The crest is designed in the form of a St. Andrew's cross with an insignia in each of the four corners. The X at the center represents the Greek letter chi, which is the first letter of the Greek word for Christ, 
Christos, the source of the English word Christ. Because of this, the X has become a traditional symbol for Christ. In August of 2012, at the 41st General Council, the United Church of Canada acknowledged the presence and spirituality of Aboriginal peoples in the United Church by revisiting the church's crest. The crest changes included incorporating the colors often associated with Aboriginal medicine wheel. The medicine wheel, which reflects respect for diversity and interdependence, is often represented in the four traditional colors of yellow, red, black, and white, which incorporate important teachings from the four directions, the four stages of life, and the four seasons. The placement of these colors will vary according to the traditions of the nation. The medicine wheel teaches us to seek balance in the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects of the circle of life. As I mentioned, the original committee wanted to see symbols of each of the three communions that united to form the United Church of Canada in 1925. The open Bible on the left side of the crest represents the congregational church and its emphasis upon God's truth that makes people free. Their heritage includes liberty and prophesying, love of spiritual freedom, awareness of the creative power of the Holy Spirit, and clear witness for civic justice. These Protestant congregations originated in Canada when the British government promised free land to New Englanders who would relocate to Nova Scotia around the mid-1700s. The Eastern churches continued to grow and expand westward throughout the 1800s, merging to form a congregational union that then joined the United Church of Canada. For me, the Open Bible reminds us of where Jesus' stories of truth and example can be found. Moving to the top of the crest, we see the dove descending, a symbol of the Holy Spirit, whose transforming power has been a distinctive mark of Methodism. The Methodist influence brought evangelical zeal, concern for human redemption, warmth of Christian fellowship, the testimony of spiritual experience, and the ministry of sacred song. The Methodist movement traces its origin in the evangelical awakening in 18th century Great Britain. There were a number of important leaders combining Methodists from Great Britain residing in Upper Canada with the American Methodist Episcopal Church to create mergers in 1874 and 1884 resulting in the Methodist Church of Canada that joined the United Church in 1925. The dove is a common symbol of the Holy Spirit that we have often heard about in reading Bible stories, including the baptism of Jesus. Finally, the third congregation is symbolized by the burning bush on the right of the crest. The symbol of Presbyterianism and the indestructibility of the church. Presbyterians brought a heritage of high regard for the dignity of worship, the education of all people, the authority of scripture, and the church as the body of Christ. Presbyterianism has a long history, going back to the 16th century, when a group of Scottish theologians broke from the Roman Catholic Church. Many escaped to Canada to avoid persecution by Catholic nations. In the late 1700s and early 1800s, factions of Presbyterians joined together in Nova Scotia, then merged with those from Central and Western Canada in 1875 to form the Presbyterian Church of Canada. 70% of congregations in this denomination joined the United Church in 1925. For me, flames are often a sign of God's power. Think of the burning bush seen by Moses or the pillars of fire that the Israelites followed out of Egypt. Supporting these three historical influences in the lower quarter of the crest are the symbols for the Alpha and Omega, the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. They symbolize the eternal living God in the fullness of creation. They are a reminder to us that God was in the beginning and will be in the end. God is around us and in us, and there is nowhere that we can go that God is not. When I told Jenny that I was going to talk about the crest, 
She said, you mean the fishy? She's right. The oval shape of the crest comes from the outline of a fish, a symbol of identity adopted by early Christians. The fish was depicted as a Christian symbol in the first decades of the second century. The symbol itself may have been suggested by the miraculous multiplication of the loaves and fishes, or the meal of the seven disciples after the resurrection on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. Its popularity among Christians was due principally, it would seem, to the f famous acrostic consisting of the initial letters of five Greek words, forming the word for fish, ichthus. These words briefly but clearly describe the character of Christ and the claim of believers. Now, excuse my Latin because I have never taken it, but here we go. Isus Christos Thalios Soter, meaning Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. Around the outside of the crest, we see words in four languages. On the lower left side, the Latin words, here we go again, ut omnis unum sint, mean that all may be one, taken from John 17, verse 21. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, God, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. On the lower right side, we find the Mohawk phrase, Aqui nia tetawanarin, which means all my relations. This phrase connects with Jesus' prayer and reflects the spirituality of indigenous peoples that acknowledges our interrelationship with all of creation. Overarching the top are the words, the United Church of Canada, in both English and French. With these words, we are reminded that we are both a united and uniting church. Our United Church of Canada, the largest Protestant denomination in Canada, was the first union of churches in the world to cross historical interdenominational lines. Along with the Congregational Church, the Methodists and the Presbyterians, the General Council of Union Churches from Western Canada also joined in 1925. Since then, the Synod of the Wesleyan Methodist Church of Bermuda, Bermuda and the Canada Conference of the Evangelical United Brethren Church have become part of the United Church of Canada as well. We are also reminded that as a denomination, we seek right relationship among all people and with creation itself. Our crest not only reflects the history of our country, but reveals that we have come from a variety of faiths, different and dissenting perhaps, but all believing in one God, one Lord Jesus Christ, and one Holy Spirit. Through worship, we seek to create spaces that offer us a taste of the beloved community that Jesus taught us. In this beloved community, the image of God is celebrated in all people, and the creative contributions of individuals, communities, and cultures are all honored and valued equally. Like we heard in Matthew 28, we are encouraged to go out into the world and share the good news of Jesus. We've heard some history. We've looked more closely at the symbols. We recited the creed, and now I challenge you to think about your role in the larger United Church service. We are called by God as disciples of Jesus to be a bold, connected, evolving church of diverse, courageous, hope-filled communities united in deep spirituality, inspiring worship, and daring justice. In our singing, creating, praying, Bible reading, and praising, we become signs of life and hope for the church. Thanks be to God.
Being part of Trinity United Church and the bigger community of the United Church of Canada helps with the holy task of being the church in this time and place. It is a hopeful investment in the future of the church and an expression of who we are, who we want to become in relationship with each other, and who God calls us to be. Our contributions of time and money allow us to grow as a global community. The offering will now be collected. As we lay before you our financial offering, we give you all that we are and everything that you have entrusted to us. Come bless these gifts for the work of your kingdom and glory. Amen. Now I won't say you have to greet each other with a holy kiss, but I do encourage you to greet one another as we come together in the passing of the peace. May the peace of Christ be with you.
Please join with me in prayer. Uniting God, we have called, you have called us from across oceans and throughout time to be the church. Give us the courage, humility, and grace to humbly accept this call at this time. Forgive us our zeal when we are overly deep, bold, and daring. Slow and steady us so that we may consider how our piety, discipleship, and witness affects those around us and best embody the way and teachings of Christ in the world. Guide and support us when the journey is treacherous, when the mountains are too high and the valleys are too low, so that for your, for your sake and by your grace we will be able to dwell deeper in our connection to you and to each other, grow bolder in our commitment to your Son and their way, and be daring in our prayer, praise, and practice. Hear our voices unite in par par prayerful song. <laughs> continue our prayers as we take a moment now to speak to you in the silence of our hearts. We speak together the prayer you have taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Thank you. 
from sea to sea to sea, we gather in prayer. From generation to generation, we sing. On this anniversary, we give thanks to God's care, guidance, and correction. As you go out into the world, carry forth the heritage of trust placed upon us as Christians, and live faithfully in unity upon this land. Go now in love. Thank you. 